Ooh, a free response for AP pre-calculus. This would be considered a first problem in the first part of your free response section. Um, the reason why is you are allowed to use a graphing calculator and it deals specifically with modeling and stuff like that. You're not looking into real life, uh, let's find the sinusoidal function of this oscillating fan. You're not looking at stuff like this. Okay, so we are allowed to use a graphing calculator for this. So every now and then you'll see me throw up a, uh, a picture of what we're dealing with here and there uh, while we do this problem. But, you know, I'll do as much as I can without a calculator. All right, so I'm going to do A on this slide and then move on to the next slide and the next slide. So you will see A, B disappear as I move on. Just make sure you rewind if you have to uh, to understand everything. Let f be an increasing function defined by x has to be positive. The table gives values of f at selected values of x. The function uh, g is given by g of x equals this polynomial x cubed minus 14x minus 27 over x plus 2. The function h is defined by h of x equals, I hate that, g of f of x. Find the value of h of 5 as the decimal approximation or indicate that it is not a decimal. So a, problem 1. Let's find out what h of 5 is. Well, h of 5 is the same thing as g of f of x. So g of f of 5, and let me bring my color blue back. So f of 5, according to this picture up here, f of 5 is going to be 34. So now I need to find out what g of 34 is. Okay, so h of 5 is the same thing as g of 34. Remember when you do these free responses to make sure that everything that you're doing flows and it looks nice and clean. Now, you don't have to show your work here. But what you would want to do is throw that in a graphing calculator, okay, whether you type it all out or you graph this function and use your, uh, you know, table to scroll down and find out what uh, g of 34 is. But g of 34, when typed out, when calculated, is going to be 1077.806. Remember to always use three decimal places for AP pre-calc. That's what they're looking for, three decimal places. So that's A, part one. Okay? A, part two. Find the value of F inverse of four or indicate that is not defined. Well, this is defined because it's continuous. So that's kind of important. You don't need to say that, but that's kind of important. Uh, thing number two is remember an inverse is when you take your x equals y and swap them. So in a sense, f inverse is basically you saying I want f of y and I need to find my x. So if your y is 4, let's go to where I get 4 and when I get an answer of 4, it must mean I plugged in 3. So f inverse of 4 is 3. And some people might not look at it that way. Some people might be like, well, I just found out that f of 3 is 4, which means flip them. f inverse of 4 is 3. Yeah, that's fine. Just make sure when you write out your answers on free response problems like this that you write out your answers. Don't just circle three because they may not give you credit. I don't know. This is a new course. So we're all kind of figuring this stuff out as we go along. So there's your A. Okay, ugly number, not so ugly number. Let's move on to the next thing and do B. Okay, same exact problem doing B now. Find all the values of X as decimal approximations for which g of x equals 3. So here's g of x. There's g of x right there. Uh, I'm going to write out 3 equals, and this is, let me write it out that this is b1. 3 equals x cubed minus 14x minus 27 over x plus 2. 
Now, this is what I would do. Okay, this is what I would do. What I would do is I would go to a regular old graphing calculator. And again, I will, I will put up a picture of what it looks like on a graphing calculator or on your graph. But if you're using like a TI calculator, type in one of your calculators, three. Type in the other equation in your calculator, x to the third minus 14x minus 27 divided by x, that's supposed to be divided by x plus 2. And when you graph both of them, you will see like a parabola looking thing kind of crossing the number 3. What you need to find there is intersect. So you go to calc, you go to intersect, enter, enter, enter. And when you do that, when you do that, you have an x value at 4.875. Again, three decimal places, three decimal places. And so what I'll do is I'll quick freeze myself and show a picture on the screen um, of what you should do to do that on your graphing calculator. Yeah, that's how it's done. Do B2. Determine the end behavior of G as X decreases without bound. All right. Wording. Be careful. Express your answer using the mathematical notation of a limit. Let me quick throw up what the graph looks like again. Now, what you can see is you have yourselves what looks like a parabola, which makes sense because if you were to... Uh, if you were to kind of do the X cubed over X, that becomes quadratic ish. This is the problem is, is we, you know, have horizontal asymptotes that make things look bad. But what we have is a quadratic kind of with a positive leading coefficient. So we know it's going to have this type of behavior. Now, what the question is asking is determine the end behavior as G uh, of G as X decreases without bound. That's a fancy way of saying find the limit as X approaches negative infinity. What does my picture look like as I move to the left? And as I move to the left, my limit as X approaches negative infinity. Don't know why I put my arrow that way. My limit as X approaches negative infinity of G of X is going to be positive infinity. Now make sure you write this out in limit notation because that's what they want. I know I saw this problem before and I was thinking, let's write both of them. The limit as X approaches positive infinity is also infinity. And you can say that. And they shouldn't mark you wrong because you're just giving too much information. You just never want to give more than necessary because if what you give that's more than necessary is incorrect, they will mark you wrong. So that's B. Dunzo. Let's move on to C. All right. Use the table of values of F to determine if F is best modeled by a linear, quadratic, exponential, or a log function. All right, so the top goes up by one, great. Let's see what happens here. Boom, 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 boom. So I go from uh, negative 10 to negative 5 is you add 5. Negative 5 to 4 is 9, so it's not linear. 4 to 17 is 13, uh, and 17 to 34 is 17. All right, so it's not linear because when I do the rate of change, when I do the rate of change, the rate of change is different every time. Let's see if it's quadratic. Let me get a better color. That seems to block that. Wish I get more space on this one, but what are you going to do? To go from 5 to 4, you get 4. To go from 9 to 13, is 4. To go from 13 to 17, is 4. So since I'm moving, since this is considered the change of the rate of change, since the change of the rate of change or the second level of changes, since that is equal, we could say for C part one 
that this is quadratic. Because when we tried linear, we didn't get the same number every time. But when we did another level, the change of the rate of change, we got fours each, which tells me it's quadratic. C2. That's all we had to do. No, no explanation. Two is the explanation. Give a reason for your answer based on the relationship between the change of the output values of F and the change of the input values of F. What I saw is the rate of the rate of change is four there for f of x is quadratic. I don't know if I'd add the space there. Okay. And I think that description is good enough. I mean, give a reason for your answer based on the relationship between the change of the output values. So the change of the output values and the input values, the rate of the rate of change is four. Okay, therefore f of x is quadratic. So that would be the uh, an example of the very first free response problem you would see on the pre-calculus AP exam according to College Board. Very exciting, very exciting. Not too bad, but not too easy either. So, you know, good luck. Love you. Like and subscribe.